Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight in um, the 11th at the 11th Equity Conference last workshop of the first day of the conference, which is acknowledging and caring for our trans siblings. Hector plus Hector, what is your last name? Would you pronounce that for me? Asencia. Thank you. And Fatima Shabazz who will join us shortly. Um, welcome and thank, and, and thank you for uh, joining us after this long day of other panels. The first thing I'd like to do is read the California land acknowledgement. Oh, I forgot to mention who I was. My name is Vicki Harvey. I'm a professor at CSU Stanislaus and my pronouns are she, her and hers. We want to acknowledge that we gather as the California Faculty Association on the traditional land of the indigenous people, past and present, and honor with gratitude the land itself and the people who have stewarded it throughout the generations. This calls us to commit to continuing to learn how to be better stewards of the land as we, inhib as we inhabit as well. To recognize the land is an expression of gratitude and appreciation to those whose territory we reside on and, and a way of honoring the indigenous people who have been living and working on the land from time immemorial. It is important to understand the longstanding history that has brought us here to reside on this land and to seek to understand our place within that history. Land acknowledgements do not exist in a past tense or historical context. Colonialism is an ongoing, is a current ongoing process and we need to build our mindfulness of our present participation. Acknowledging the land is an important indignous, indignous <laughs> protocol that we are honoring today. My apology for um, not pronouncing that word correctly. So we have two panelists for you tonight. Um, Hector is a movement consultant, community builder, and social justice advocate working at the intersection of community and coalition building, public policy, and advocacy in research justice. For more than 15 plus years, Hector has worked with and for undocumented Californians communities of color and transgender and queer communities. As a member of these identities, Hector offers a unique perspective and strategic approach to creating movements and social justice practice, practices. Fatima, who has joined us, I see. Hi. Um, is originally from Brooklyn, New York, is a longtime resident of Los Angeles and the CEO president of Fatima Speaks LLC, a transgender led African-American owned and operated business that conducts culturally sensitive, cultural sensitivity competency trainings, as well as panel and motivational speaking engagements. Ms. Shabazz, and I might have been, I might have mispronounced that. And my apologies if I did. Thank you. Um, is an activist and advocate for the rights of the LGBTQ plus population, as well as a social justice advocate. And as a formally system impacted individual, is a staunch proponent of prison reform, as well as political and justice reform. Ms. Shabazz has a clear and precise focus on creating safer and more inclusive spaces for the LGBTQ plus community, as well as creating stronger social justice reform policies and policy and policy advocacy that will make life better for communities directly and sometimes adversely impacted by those policies by these policies which include, but are not limited to prison reform and women's reproduction, reproductive health policies, hate crime laws and school bullying. So I'm not sure who would like to start us off this evening. Hector, would that be you? 
Well, Fatima and I are actually presenting together. Okay, uh, thank you, Kiki, for sharing the slides for us. And as we get started, just welcome everyone. Thank you for, for being here. I'm going to be dropping in the chat a link to a workbook uh, that you can use to follow along in the presentation. If you don't have something to write with in front of you, we encourage you to get maybe a journal, something for to help you put pen to paper. We are going to be asking you uh, to have um, some, uh, answer some questions and reflect in this process of being a TGI accomplice. Again, welcome to Acknowledging and Caring for TGI Siblings at the 2022 Equity Conference. TGI stands for Transgender, Gender Expansive, and Intersex. Next slide, please. Hello, everyone. My, yeah. my, I'm Fatima Malika Shabazz. Thank you for showing up. Appreciate your time and your effort. Um, we hope that this turns out okay today. <laughs> We're gonna to do our best to make sure that everyone is informed and given you know, the proper information. Thank you, Fatima. So uh, these are our pronouns. Uh, Fatima's pronouns are she, her, hers. Mine's are they, them, we, us. Next slide, please. Uh, so as instructions uh, for really the sake of uh, intellectual property and being able to honor people's work, you're not allowed to adopt this information and use it as your own. We want you to share it out, however, and use it in your classrooms. What we do ask is that you share, that you are sharing it out with us. We'd love to see how the information is being carried out into community and in your classrooms. Uh, we ask uh, that you share that with us. Uh, we know that we did a land acknowledgement. Uh, we want to re-emphasize and really invite you to move as the elements uh, as we move through, uh, through our conversations. And here is a quick resource if you'd like to find what land you're on, a uh, native land app. So for the purpose of today, next slide, please. For the purpose of today, we're convening here uh, as uh, California Faculty Association team members to be transformative relationship with TGI communities. Uh, we're going to, this is really tapping into uh, 101 uh, basics. Uh, so you may have heard some of the information that we're going to uh, share with you. If you'd like to move deeper into the conversation, we do invite you to ask questions as we're moving through the content. We're gonna be doing this by dissecting your gender and how it was created. So everyone's gender uh, was created in one way or another. So we're going to ex explore what that was like for you. We're gonna shift your internal system. Uh, we are all a system and we've been taught to function as a cis, system, cis, uh, taking the term for cisgendered of, uh, uh, understanding our world is binary. So a lot of our shifting, our internal system is moving beyond uh, a binary mindset. Uh, and lastly, we'll be understanding basic, basic key terms and identities. We'll be going through some terms and language uh, so you can get a good sense of uh, what, uh, what language is used within community. Okay. Outside, aside from these pieces, uh, Fatima and I will be sharing either personal stories, uh, experiences as we share, uh, examples as we share the content as well. Any other thoughts on our purpose or objectives, Fatima, for the space? What people should prepare themselves for? <laughs> um, well, just prepare to be informed. Uh, I'm, I'm probably a little more straightforward than many people are accustomed to. Um, I believe it works. I want people to have the proper understanding, um, but I'm also a conversationalist, so don't, you know, feel free to ask me any questions that you like. Um, I'll, you know, I, I'll answer them. Um, but I'm straightforward about my approach with this entire thing, uh, and I hope that that you know, works well for you. Gracias, Fatima. So let's get into it. Uh, next slide, please. And again, you can follow along within the booklet. In the section of creating your gender, you'll see that we have the following questions. So creating your gender. Next slide. 
here are some questions for you to reflect on. Uh, gender is generally something that's constructed even before we are born. Uh, our parents have an understanding of how they want to treat us, how they want to direct themselves uh, towards us based on what they understand our gender to be and even celebrate it uh, before uh, we, we come into this world. Uh, so we want to know what that experience was like for you. The first question is, when did you first understand your gender? At what age, really? Was it at a young age where you came to, uh, came to learn what your traits and your behaviors are? And really, who taught you about your gender and how you are to behave? Uh, was it a parent? Was it a sibling? Was it an elder, an aunt, an uncle, someone in your family, or maybe uh, someone who was uh, a friend that taught you to understand uh, what your gender is and how you are to behave based on this gender. Okay, so we're gonna break out into groups of three. We currently have uh, 52 participants. Uh, it's going to, it's okay if we break out into random order. Uh, Kiki, is this something that you can help us with? Hector, you know what? This is a webinar, so we can't break out into groups. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Only in the meeting form. Yeah. Okay, not a problem. Thank you, Kiki. Okay. For sure. <laughs> so let's all grab a pen and paper and answer some of these questions to ourselves. We're going to take a few minutes. If you have something to write. And again, the questions are, when did you first understand your gender? And question number two, who taught you about your gender and how you are to behave? So we're going to take four minutes to free write, answering these two questions. OK. Now that we're coming back into the space, the questions were, when did you first understand your gender and who taught you about your gender and how you are to behave? Now, because we are in a webinar format, uh, folks aren't able to come off of mute. Uh, so we invite people to either write in the chat or within the question section, uh, their responses. Uh, let us know when did you first understand your gender or who taught you about your gender and how you are to behave. As folks respond, uh, we'll share. Uh, so I, I apologize, I forgot to describe myself. So uh, I'm a trans masculine uh, individual wearing a black jacket. I have short hair, glasses, and I'd say white latte Mexican. Uh, Fatima, would you like to describe yourself for folks? There you go. So, I was going to say that I'm African American, but I'm just I'm an African who just happens to be American um, with a pink hat on. I like hats. Um, black on black, black skirt, black sequin heels, black top. Um, pretty much describe myself as queen of everything. Thank you, Fatima. As folks are sharing, uh, either in the chat or in the questions, the responses, uh, would you like to share uh, what gender means to you and how you created your gender? When did I first understand? Are you at, when did I first understand my gender? I don't think I'm 58 now. I think I first understood my gender maybe 20 years ago. Um, I don't know that anyone ever really understands their gender, but I really first understood my gender when I, when I realized um, exactly who I was meant to be, the making of me, to get me to this 58 years. Um, I identify as female, pretty much. Um, I've always felt female um, from a very, very young age. I may be 10, 11, or 12, or 13 years old. Uh, but I've not always been able to exhibit that, to express that. But I've always felt that this is who I am. It just took 58 years to make me me today. 
Uh, but I don't know about understanding my gender. I understand who I am as a person. And that's good enough for me. You know, I don't, I tend to try to stay away from gender roles or gender identities as much as I possibly can, but I understand who I am as a person. And that's more important to me than anything else. That's beautiful. Thank you, Fatima. So I, it's brought to my attention that you can't write in the chat, but you can write in the Q&A section. So if you would like to write your responses there, uh, since the chat is disabled, thank you for, for sharing that with us. Uh, so for myself, I'd say uh, similarly in terms of uh, gender, it was always very, uh, very confusing to me that it was limited whether how I was to behave, how I was to respond, uh, and also how I was uh, treated. Uh, it always seems very, very strange. And for myself, I didn't under, my mind didn't understand necessarily what I needed, but more so my body. It was my body telling me in different ways uh, to, um, uh, to just allow myself to, to be more masculine, to either uh, present more masculine. Uh, I remember just feeling the need to want to cut my hair. And when I finally did, it brought me so much happiness. And so it was nothing that my mind could necessarily comprehend. It was more so of um, a feeling that I knew of, of, of joy and happiness that I would have if, uh, if, if I were to look a, a different way. The question, we have a question in the chat that says, can we see the black squint shoes, please? I don't know what that means, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. So let me share screen. I apologize team, I thought that we were able to break out into <laughs> groups for some reason. So uh, as far as lessons that we do want to take uh, away as far as uh, creating gender and understanding gender uh, is that TGI people have always existed and will continue to exist. Uh, transgender, gender expansive and intersex people, it's really a lot of our history that has uh, either been erased, denied, neglected, uh, where we are coming to understand how, who we are as a, a people in different ways. Uh, we haven't had a lot of uh, uh, time really to be able to explore our, our identity in, in, in a way where we're freely able to do so. And so a lot of uh, th this, I, I believe that this is why we have also uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of terms that we continue to develop because we continue to find uh, find ourselves, um, find pieces of ourselves, find, find much more depth into who we are as a humanity, who we are as a people, that our language begins to expand as well. And so as we communicate it, we continue to create language to be able to identify it. And depending on the individual, their relationship again with language, uh, some people uh, don't like uh, identifying, uh, simply know, as Fatima mentioned, simply know who they are and what they need. Uh, would you like to read the next one, Fatima, since you made it clear this is your understanding as well of your reality? Masculinity and femininity are, and femininity are behaviors and traits that exist inside everyone. Mm -hmm. um, absolutely. Historically, if you are it doesn't really matter what religion you, you, you ascribe to or what spiritual belief you ascribe to, you will always find that masculinity and femininity are behaviors and are ex absolutely beyond any equivocal shadow of a doubt um, traits that exist inside of everyone. And the irony in that is that the feminine trait, although it is always, uh, there's always an attempt to suppress it, seems to be the more powerful and the stronger of the two traits that exist within us. Mm -hmm. um, 
I think that once everyone understands that masculinity and femininity are coexisting traits and exhibit and expand on behaviors that we all have, I think people will get a better understanding of who they are as individuals, mm -hmm. you know, not as a collective or as a group or as a montage, but a better understanding as to who you are as an individual, because you will see what dominant behavior or traits exist within you. Exactly. Thank you, Fatima. And often people may feel that because they are a certain gender, they can't uh, pursue or or be or carry out a trait that exists within themselves because uh, either they're not supposed to or feel like they can in a certain space in certain environments what i'll also say about this is that when as i continue to have more conversations uh, with tgi people and i know that currently in our social justice spaces we we talk a lot about uh, the of uh, the future being feminine uh, there's a lot of conversations within Chijai folks also uh, recognizing that the uh, that that our future is uh, is is our duality and our fluidity uh, within our uh, masculinity and femininity. Understanding that uh, we need both; both of them are needed at um, different points in time, and and honoring both of them. Uh, so really, that shift in being able to uh recognize that duality within ourselves and allowing it to be uh is really a lot of the direction that tgi folks are are expanding what do you think fatima well um mind if i add something right there of course i think in the existence that we have right now in the world that we live in right here today with all of the cities and states who are actively spending a lot of taxpayer dollars to create anti-trans laws, it is apparent to me, at least, that this matriarchy that we live in is afraid of, ex of exposing the feminine side of themselves or allowing that side to exist in anyone other than the gender norm um, that we exist within the day. And as long as we keep rolling down that road, the only thing that's gonna happen is you're gonna keep rolling down that road, you know? Uh, and eventually the road ends, but gravity is a hell of a thing, you know? Bodies at motion stay at motion, bodies at rest stay at rest. But the bodies at motion will always be stopped by an unmovable force. And please believe the harder that you try to fight who you are, Forget trying to fight who I am because you can't beat me at, be, at me being me. That ain't going to never happen. So if that's your motive, if that's your, you know, modus operandi, mode scheme, scheme bent that mind, you fight the losing battle already. You, you will never change who I am, right? But as long as you keep fighting against who you are, you're going to always be miserable. You're going to always make people around you miserable. And at some point, everyone around you will see through who you really are. And this is going to come up to whether or not you want to admit that and accept who you are. Please believe me, when you do, man, it's like you lifted the whole planet off your shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Fatima. Yes, we definitely want you to understand that being a TGI accomplice is much more than uh, your relationship with TGI people, yes, uh, the, the political, the institutional aspects of creating protections and, 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 spa and safe spaces. Uh, and also, it's very much internal. It's very much you recognizing your, your own level of comfort and discomfort with masculinity, femininity, and, and how we exist in our world and coming to terms with that for yourself. The, the more that you accept, uh, accept this, this level of complexity and multifacetedness of, of gender and sexuality that exists within you, the more that you're likely to accept it within others as well and allow TGI people to be so we can all exist in peace. So a real challenge in being able to do that is really this third point because we've been ingrained and associated in uh, and taught that gender equals genitalia. So being able to unlearn a lot of those 
uh, lessons that gender and genitals are not the same thing. Uh, being able to understand and accept TGI people is also being able to break our understanding of, of, of grammar and science in different ways as far as uh, limitations of our understanding of these that, uh, again, we've been taught. Makes sense. Um, mm -hmm. Attraction is expansive, natural, and empowering. I don't know why people don't get that. I don't know who told them that it wasn't. Um, but we got to get out of these constraints, these mental constraints that we're in. We have to get out of those things. And you got to know what, what you're attracted to to begin with. And you have to know what attracts you to it. You know, he or him or her, it or that. Then. You know, yeah, exactly. I mean, we are attracted as athletes. We are attracted to sports because we like that sport or um, we were taught that sport as, as younger people and we excelled at that. So that's the one thing that we want to do all of the time. Right. But an attraction is, is, is an expansive thing. You never know. And this is kind of cliche, but you can't dictate who you're going to love, believe it or not. You know, you can dictate who you're going to be friends with or not be friends with. You can possibly dictate who you're going to date or not date. Unless, of course, you're dating a strong black woman and she's going to tell you who you're going to date and not date. That would be me. Um, but at the end of the day, the person that you fall in love with is going to be the person that you've been looking for your entire life and has been standing there right next to you your entire life. But it's still expansive. You know, we get attracted for different reasons. I always say beauty attracts me, but it won't keep me. You know, have to be able to have a conversation at least five minutes a day without boring me to death. You know, it's natural, though. We are naturally attracted to the things that we perceive as beautiful, as strong, as powerful, as relevant in the world that we live in and relevant in our lives. And once we have that natural attraction, it becomes an all empowering situation, which is why in Lion Prize, although the men is the, the males are the kings of the jungle, the women handle all of the business. It's empowering. It's strong. It's you can't evade it. You can't avoid it. You can't do anything but recognize it and bow down. And if you keep trying to destroy it, it'll keep rising up against you like an eight-headed hydra. So get over it. Figure it out. Yes, figure it out. So part of what we'll be moving into next is being able to support you to figure out. So understanding that in different ways, your gender uh, has been uh, constructed by yourself and your environment, and being able to shift that by shifting the system. Again, the system of, that we've been uh, taught and want to move against. Understanding yourself as a system, that there's certain things that you understand as true, as right and wrong. And so we want to be able to move away from that, from binary thinking uh, and also recognizing all of this new information uh, that we need to learn. Uh, so this is actually a tool that was shared by Susana Asparras, who is a licensed clinical social worker. Uh, she, use it, she uses it in terms of uh, recognizing our inner voice. So we're using this tool in terms of being able to uh, improve our relationship and our inner voice of, uh, with uh, TGI people and TGI perspectives. So this uh, circle here is recognizing that our feelings are connected to our thoughts and are connected to our actions. So if we have feelings of hopelessness and incompetence, um, we're going to uh, have uh, uh, negative actions of self-harm, self-sabotage, and think very negative things of unworthiness and being burdensome. So helpful thoughts, being able to recognize that uh, our, our mind is a muscle and being able to practice our mind. So as we're unlearning who TGI people are, we wanna recognize uh, feelings 
uh, that are positive, of, of being alive, of being powerful, of recognizing that TGI people have a lot to offer the world, a lot of uh, lessons and blessings of who we are as a humanity. Moving into uh, 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 thoughts of recognizing that uh, TGI people matter and are worthy of life and protection because we want to get you towards actions of having relationships with TGI people, building accomplishments, uh, creating policies and programs that protect and create support for TGI people. So reaching out and having these conversations as we build relationships. So that being the tool we want to share with you. And just quickly, let's see, I have on the chat, someone shared, yes, just appreciating the description. Okay, perfect. Okay, so we're going to uh, take a few more minutes for you to uh, write uh, some of these questions. Uh, first, we're going to assess what are some unhelpful thoughts that you have about TGI people? Uh, where, does, where did these thoughts about TGI people come from? And how does the thought impact your actions and feelings about TGI people? So let's take two minutes to think about what are some unhelpful thoughts that you have about TGI people, where they come from, and how it impacts your actions. Okay. As far as unhelpful thoughts that exist for TGI people, they are not helpful. <laughs> so no need to, let's see. Leslie, let's, Leslie Bryan shared. A lot of unhelpful thoughts about TGI folks pushed on me came from the church. Even as a child, I felt this was wrong. It impacted me to push back against these discriminatory thoughts and see TGI folks for who they are. Just my friend and her family, no big deal. Thank you, Leslie, for sharing that. So a lot of the unhelpful thoughts coming from the church. What about some other folks? Where did some of your unhelpful thoughts come from? No need to repeat what the unhelpful thoughts are. Uh, if you feel comfortable sharing where they came from or maybe some of your experience around them, we welcome you uh, to write in the Q&A section. Okay. So now moving, we wanna be able to shift away from unhelpful thoughts and into helpful thoughts. So I'd also, I also, I will share that uh, for myself as a, uh, as a trans person, uh, I have unhelpful thoughts myself. Uh, it's uh, a lot of my unlearning as well, and uh, just my process. Uh, a lot of what does help is my environment being in a home that is supportive, that affirms my pronouns, uh, that uh, recognizes uh, 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 me within my gender and uses uh, my correct name. The environment aspect is key. So we do have a TGI folks, uh, for example, that may live uh, in an unprotected home uh, and a lot of uh, support is needed uh, and, and can be difficult to move away from unhelpful thoughts based on the people that, that are around us. So if uh, you are in a position to create uh, a safe and welcoming environment uh, for uh, your students or within your home, uh, it does uh, beyond being able to manage it internally. And uh, the, uh, as, a, as a TGI person, there's only so much that I can do uh, uh, be before you know this this bubble that I create kind of clo closes in because it can be uh, it can be intense the level of of resistance and attacks uh, that are uh, directed towards uh, TGI people. Okay, Marcela shared unhelpful thoughts coming from family about confusion on identity. Oh, the word confusion. Uh, and uh, Talitha, I think a lot of unhelpful thoughts from media portrayals of TGI folks. Yes, thank you for that. So there's a lot of 
uh, great new uh, media that has um, been uh, led by TGI people, specifically uh, if you haven't caught the series Veneno, it's on HBO Max, and Una Mujer Fantastica, a fantastic and extraordinary woman as well on HBO Max, if you'd like to catch those. Any thoughts on unhelpful thoughts, Fatima, before we go to helpful thoughts? Um, yeah, I was actually about to send an answer to, um, to, to um, Marcel Alvarado. So unhelpful thoughts are almost always grown by your family. It's usually the per the people, and this is another cliche thing. It's usually the people closest to you that hurt you the worst. Um, and in the world that we live in, in the life that we live in, most of, if not everything, that we come to know as normal comes from our relatives. So, when it comes down to unhelpful thoughts, first of all, we got to see thought in and of itself as an action, a verb, a forceful piece of work that is constant and ever-changing so if you live in an environment that is so masculine right that it's, it, it, it permeates every living thing around it and around you you are bound to be subjected to like massive intensity to unhelpful thoughts and you're going to hear all of the negative intonations and you're going to hear all of the bad words, all of the faggots and the sissies and the homos. You're going to hear all of that. And those things are going to impact you if you are already feeling as if there's a change in you, there's a shift in you. You know, your spirit is telling you that I should be right when this person who's supposed to be my relative and family member and love me and care for me is telling me that I should be left and explaining to me that if I don't be left, then being right makes me an abomination. And those things stick with you. Those things stick with you until you are around people who take that thought and use that action and give you helpful thoughts. Gracias, Fatima. Being able um, to move to helpful thoughts because we want to recognize that unhelpful thoughts are not a permanent state. They are not where we want to be. They're where we are always trying to move away from <laughs> towards helpful thoughts. So helpful thoughts, again, we're going to take a few minutes to answer these questions. So the question is, what are helpful thoughts about TGI people you'd like to practice? What are helpful thoughts about TGI people you'd like to practice? And what are helpful feelings and actions that can develop from helpful thoughts? So what are helpful thoughts you like to practice? And what are helpful feelings and actions that can develop from these helpful thoughts? Okay, again, let's take two minutes to answer these questions. If you'd like to help us uh, answer this question in the chat, so what are some helpful thoughts about TGI people that you'd like to practice and some feelings and actions that can develop out of that? So Fatima, sh you shared in the chat, families are farmers and negative and helpful thoughts are the manure they use to make the rest of their bullshit grow. Yes. <laughs> Yes, I, um, I'd also say, let's see. Oh, yes, I'll repeat the names of the Una Mujer Fantastica and Veneno was the other one. As far as the, 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 the cinema, we'd love for you to, to check out. Uh, Marcela shared, helpful thoughts in my space come from my chosen family, aka friends. In this space, we can challenge each other to stretch our thinking and beliefs. These thoughts include courage of expression and affirmations, tapping into who we are, and even if they challenge the status quo. Beautiful, Marcel. Gracias. Beautiful chosen family that helps you grow. 
Uh, so for uh, TGI and queer people, uh, chosen families are really a uh, strong foundation and backbone uh, to our, for our ability to thrive and survive in many uh, instances. As Fatima mentioned, if we live in a family of uh, farmers whose manure is consistently breaking us uh, down in different ways and feeding us unhelpful thoughts. Uh, it takes a lot of time to, uh, to undo and being able to surround ourselves with community and, and uh, chosen family is really a strong core of our, again, our ability to thrive and survive. Any other helpful thoughts that folks would like to uh, would like to share, please, uh, please uh, write them in the chat. So the first two exercises, uh, and this is really our, our model and, and theory for uh, social change, working uh, without, against, and within uh, systems of power. So for today's two exercises in the beginning, we really focused on the without. We want to recognize that your own personal care and creating community is really foundational to our ability to change the world. So this is why we really want you to take your time in being able to dissect your own gender, dissect your own understanding of TGI uh, 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 people. Uh, as you begin to develop accomplished accomplishments and relationships um, with TGI people to create a different world. Uh, our next steps in being able to do that is, uh, is within and against. Uh, within, uh, I'm sorry, it says here with, it's, it's actually within. So within you work within the UC system and are a part of an administration, a classroom, a department. Uh, many spaces that can allow you to be able to understand how uh, the current system works and how to navigate it. So uh, one of your superpowers being within an institution, uh, a prestigious institution and recognizing uh, how to navigate these systems is being able to identify port points of entry for creating safety and protection for TGI people towards TGI liberation. The how you do this is consistent engagement and challenging of power, uh, recognizing that you may be held with resistance uh, to be able to create change within your institution and recognizing that that's part, part of the work within itself, all held under a foundation of your own strong personal uh, care and awareness of knowing who you are and the importance of, of being in a with TGI people. Any thoughts, Fatima, on our theory of change about working without, within, and against systems of power? Um, actually, no, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Things don't change um, until you change them. Um, you know, if you can't change the people you with, change the people you with, that kind of a situation. And we have to work beginning we have to work from without. We have to work from the outside in um, because the system just doesn't work any other way until you get into it and start destroying it, get into your nucleus of it and start pulling it apart and picking it apart and slapping people around and getting people to understand that this is the reality of the situation. Um, I'm against, to certain degrees, I'm, I'm against a lot of the political shifts that go on because I think a lot of them are basically just grandiose grandstanding and self servings you know? Um, and I'm not cool with that. Don't come talk to me if you want a sound bite because I'm not really about sound bites unless you want me to slap you. And that's a pretty good sound bite because it, it crackles across the microphone. Right? <clears throat> Fortunately, if I do slap you, it's usually gonna be with, with verbiage. I'm, I'm gonna tell you exactly what you need to know, exactly how you need to know it, and I'm not going to blow smoke up your ass and I'm not going to cut corners, right? We have to stand outside of a system that doesn't want to acknowledge we exist. You know, Health and Human Services Department said that they want to write the, the whole term of transgender out of the lexicon of the, uh, of, of the general public, which means that they're just going to write us into, you know, like, like we're disappearing ink or something. They're just going to write us on a piece of paper and we're going to disappear and, never be, and not be here again. It does not work that way. You know, 
in your everyday life, you probably encounter at least three transgender people that you don't even know are trans. It's not like we're running around with flags that say, hey, look at me. I'm a trans masculine individual or I'm a trans feminine individual. You know, I don't have that tattooed on my forehead, though I should did. I should do it just to prove a point. You know, this is not what we do. We we don't want to impinge on your way of living. You know, we don't really give a damn that you and your wife ain't getting along. That's your problem. You know, we, we don't care that your wife left you for another woman. The other woman was probably better. You know, that's your problem. The problem here is that no one wants to listen. Everybody want to go to heaven, but don't nobody want to die. Right? That doesn't work like that, partner. You have to have a conversation. You have to listen in a conversation. And the two of you have to actually have a exchange of ideas so that you understand what the system has done and how that has become so personally ingrained within each one of us that nothing of political, uh, I'm, not, I'm gonna be nice about it. Nothing a politician is gonna do or say is gonna change that, right? Because you cannot legislate the thoughts of people. You can just make it a little bit uncomfortable for them if they break a law, but they still feel like that. The only way to change those things is you gotta sit down, man, and have a conversation with me. And as hard as it may be to hear your own truth spit right back at you, you got to sit through that shit. You got to sit in it. You know what I'm saying? Don't nobody understand how deep the shit that they are in that is it is until they're in that shit. Then you understand that it's not ankle deep. It is not knee deep. It's you into your neck with this, man. You're up to your neck in this. And unless you get to the point where you don't want to be up to your neck in that, it's going to eventually be above your head and it's going to smother you. But it'll still permeate in a negative manner because your legacy lives on with the people that you taught that bullshit to. Gracias, Fatima. Yeah, why, why it's so crucial to break these uh, cycles now and within yourselves. And uh, I agree, you can't legislate humanity. You can't legislate kindness. You can't legislate the ability for someone uh, to treat TGI people with, with decency. Uh, that is why we really wanted to emphasize uh, the practices today on, on the personal, uh, so that at least you in your everyday, you carry yourself uh, with care and grace towards TGI people, recognizing uh, their humanity, uh, our humanity and right to life, love, happiness. Uh, Beth Baker here shared as a helpful thought, trans and non-binary people are special, brave, true to themselves, powerful. Gracias, this Beth. Is this I, is true. These are facts. <laughs> these, these are facts. We, we, well, it, it takes a lot to be who we are. You know, there's no other segment of the population, right, with the exception of physically or mentally um, handicapped people that get up every day knowing that you have an entire planet that hates you and don't want you to exist, but do what we do and live our lives every day, you know? So yeah, you have to be special. You have to be strong. I was just having a conversation with a friend of mine um, who felt a little bit put off by a former relationship. And I know her for who she is, or at least who I think she is. And, and my whole concept is this. If the person that you spend your life with, if this is supposed to be your partner, your planned life partner, right, and they don't honor you and appreciate you and, and cherish you and hold your heart like it's the biggest treasure on the, in the universe, if they don't do those things, right, then they are destroying your life and wasting the time of the person who is out there waiting to do all of those things for you. You know, but to get to those points, man, we got to understand that we ain't that much. We are not that much different from each other. We are not. You know, my bills got to be paid. Hector's got to be paid. Right. The interpreter's bills have to be paid. Audrina's bills have to be paid. If the bills don't get paid, we get services cut off. We get evicted. We get cars repossessed and all of those things. You know, we are not very much different. You know, we, we want the same things 
that everyone else wants. We want to live peaceful, promising, you know, adult lives. We want our children to be healthy and intelligent and strong and open-minded. And, you know, I'm not going to say colorblind because it's impossible to be colorblind. You see color all the time. It's ingrained in us. You know, we've been taught that black is black and white is white and white is right. You know, we so I don't, mm -hmm. it's crazy. It, it's, it's ridiculous to have to say the same things over and over again and that adults move into adulthood with these just bad ideas and, and make no effort to want to change those ideas by just having an exchange of ideas. It's as simple as that, an exchange of ideas. You know how many things you can stop or how many great things you can create in a five-minute conversation? It does not take a lot. But until we get to that point, we'll, we'll, we'll be doing this over and over again. And I have no problem with it. Mm -hmm. Gracias, Fatima. Hi, I do want to add a, a lot of the, the attacks that you mentioned are currently taking place politically. I believe uh, Texas just passed uh, banning uh, trans children from playing in sports. And in Florida, they just passed the Don't Say Gay Bill, which is now moving to the governor's desk. Uh, our ability to access health care, specifically much more with children, is consistently under attack uh, nationwide. Here in California, we are advocating uh, for different policies and uh, actually made some advances within being able to um, have some funding available for for trans health across the state. Uh, so we continue to advocate. And as uh, we continue to advance our political agenda, we invite you to join us in those efforts uh, by having close relationships with your representatives and emphasizing the need to uh, create protections and access uh, for TGI people instead of uh, excluding and banishing us uh, from basic human needs. So here's, go ahead, Fatima. Here's a question you should probably ask yourself. If you were in a situation, in a life or death situation in which you needed a transfusion to survive, and the only person available with your blood type to give you that transfusion is a trans person, what do you do? We definitely need each other. How Gilda shared, we need a no fly zone over Florida and Texas. <laughs> we need to get people over there to respond as well. Yeah, you know what though? One of, the, one of the best things that ever happened to stop the state from doing anything was Arizona and the Super Bowl. When Arizona would not acknowledge Martin Luther King's birthday as a national holiday, the NFL said that they would not have a Super Bowl there that year or any other year until they did do that. Now, those of us who are black on black on black, we understand the significance of Martin Luther King beyond his birthday just being a holiday and you get the day off of work, right? But the reality of the situation is it is an extremely financially profitable day. And the thought of having an empty stadium for the Super Bowl that was slated to be your city and tens of millions of dollars not coming into your town changed Arizona's minds. So if we want to fight a lot of this legislation going on in Texas and in Florida and in some of the other states that's got all these things going on, um, we need to hit them in their pockets. We need to mobilize across sports arenas, across entertainment arenas, across business arenas. If I can't, if you don't want me in your store because I'm trans, you can't have my money. You can't smile at me and take my money and then rush me out your store because you don't want me to have a, you know, to present a bad impression because I'm trans. You can't have me and, and, and uh, you can't not have me and have my money. You just can't do that. So I think that, you know, that's, in my opinion, that seems to be the thing that works best when you tap somebody's pocket they get a little irate about that they, and, and it changes some minds. You know, we gotta be, we have to be, we have to be, we have to be bold enough to break the rules, strong enough to make our own and you gotta keep what you take.
It's the method that I live by. It serves me well most of the time. Sometimes it gets me in some trouble. But I'm, I'd am rather it get me in trouble than leave me high and dry with nothing. I'm bold enough to break the rules. I'm strong enough to make my own. I'm going to keep what I take. And that's the bottom line on that. If you don't want me, you can't have my money. You can't have my friend's money, my family's money. You can't have none of us. So you can sit your ass in Florida in that humid air and fight with them, ga- fight with them gators and them crocodiles about the fish that you're trying to catch because you can't eat no more because we're not spending our money there. I love all of your uh, uh, sports uh, references. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great way of understanding uh, uh, our world and how we function, especially living under a capitalist society. We definitely need to uh, hit people's pockets in different ways in order to uh, have some sort of recognition and attention towards these issues. And so the piece about engaging in challenging power consistently uh, fighting against is definitely uh, key because there are these power structures uh, that can carry some weight and some pull around being able to make some changes. So within your realm, your pull and your structures being education and uh, faculty and academic spaces, uh, being able to expand uh, uh, within that realm. Okay, so it is 645, uh, being able to move to understanding the basics. Uh, this is within your packet as well. This is a very uh, general, uh, very easy way. It's, uh, this is a very simplistic way of being able to make the distinction between these different aspects of, uh, of, um, of sex, uh, sexuality and gender. Uh, so uh, very quickly, so we can get to the terms, uh, gender identity. And also this is very much framed within a binary framework of, of women, man, masculine, feminine, and recognizing again that uh, our reality is much more complex than that. So we have gender identity of who you uh, know that you are, recognizing your gender, gender expression. This can often be in how you act, how you dress, uh, the energy that you, also the energy that you exude. Uh, Biological sex is determined uh, by birth and sexual orientation is based on your attraction. Uh, So folks often uh, uh, confuse these, often thinking that gender expression implies sexual orientation uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, being able to recognize them as separate. And uh, because you have uh, a specific gender, it does not imply a certain uh, sexual orientation or expression. So uh, trans and queer people actually exist within the the complexities and multifacetedness of, of, uh, of the different variations and realities that exist within all of these Uh, identities, expressions, and orientations. Uh, So this is not uh, meant to confuse you. Uh, This is meant to really move move us towards depth, move us towards depth of who we are as a humanity, understanding ourselves much more profoundly uh, by moving away from these binary limitations of who we are as people. Again, you can begin to explore uh, uh, who, who you are in, in various ways as well. Moving quickly to the terms uh, within your packet, you will see, so this is your packet here. You went through the different pieces, the gender bear, and then understanding the basics. Uh, so here you'll see different uh, terms around uh, transgender, two-spirit cisgender. Uh, we want you to take a few minutes to take a look at these and see if you have any questions. Uh, but since we're at 6.48, oh, there are the shoes. <laughs> Let's uh, take a quick second to admire the shoes. Thank you for Tima for gracing us with the sparkle. It's always all about the shoe. <laughs> <laughs> that is Fatima's gender expression, okay? Expression of femininity 
in all its glory. Okay, so gender transition. Um, what I will say about a gender transition, let's say, for example, uh, someone in your life, someone in your classroom shares with you that they are transgender uh, or that they are uh, gender non-conforming, non-binary, intersex. Uh, first and foremost, you know, su support, create the environment for them to be themselves, and also recognize that uh, uh, TGI people have a very different relationship with transition. Some people transition socially, which means they'll share with you that now they go by a different pronoun, or that they've changed their name, uh, or maybe their expression uh, uh, has changed. Uh, there's uh, medical transitioning, which again, it's not for everyone. It is a personal choice, regardless of people choose to transition medically or not. If they've shared with you uh, who they are and who, what their gender is, being able to uh, treat them as such is the, is the practice. So here you'll see uh, much more uh, terms. Uh, we'll give you a few minutes to uh, take a look at those, but since we have about 11 minutes left, we did want to also go into Q&A for folks. Jessica loves the shoes. It is always all about the shoes. Love them. Okay. Any specific terms, Fatima, that you think are important for folks to keep in mind? in understanding TGI folks? Terms, 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 terms. Um, I'm, I'm finding that one of the bigger problems that TGI folks are having is being misgendered. Um, so in terms of terms, <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I'm not so caught up in the terms as, it, as I am in people not speaking before they speak, if that makes any sense at all. You know, if you do not know how someone identifies, um, you don't have to make a big scene about it, but ask them, you know, what do you prefer to be called? What do you, what, you know, what, what do you prefer to be um, recognized as? He, you know, what are your pronouns? He, she, she, you know, she or her, he or him. Um, and if possible, man, just have a conversation. Now, I'm, I'm going to always go back to this conversation thing because nothing happens without a conversation taking place first. With the possible exception of God creating the universe because God was God. He didn't have to have a conversation about creating nothing. But we are, we are not God. So in, in terms of these terms, man, a lot of these terms are not even terms that we've created on, our, on you know, ourselves. Some of them, however, ring true. Being dead named. That to me is, every time I hear that, just the term itself, man, it, it's like a sinking stone in, 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 in the pit of my stomach to be dead named. You know, your life has been taken and someone doesn't even have the respect and the courtesy to recognize who you are, you know? And it is a deplorable thing to do, you know, even if you don't like a person or you didn't like that individual's lifestyle, respect how that person lived, respect how that person functioned every day of their lives until someone who thought that they were better than God decided that that person shouldn't should no longer be here. Don't dead name people. Even when, even in remembering them, you know, don't say, well, you know, um, Tina passed away six months ago, but you know, Tina used to be, you know, Anthony. We don't care what Tina used to be. We care who Tina was to us in the time that Tina, you know, graced our lives and blessed our spirits from the moment that we met Tina. So don't tell me that Tina used to be Anthony because all you're going to do is piss me off and make you really make me really want to tell you some things that are, are uncomfortable for me to say and you to hear. You know, talk to me about Tina. Don't dead name my people. 
you know, um, if someone has a preferred name, use it. If they want to be called Rumpel Stillskin riding the goat, call them Rumpel Stillskin riding the goat. Don't say, well, you know, your mama named you Clay, so I'm going to call you Clay. Yeah, well, you see how that worked for Sonny Liston. <laughs> you know, don't do that. If somebody says, call me Janet, you know, don't say, hey, James. Call that person what they want to be called. You know, so in terms of terms, those are the things that that, that seriously bother me to know it. Thank you, Fatima. And it makes uh, it makes sense just being able to. Um, uh, I think being consistently dead name, consistently misgendered, uh, is uh, uh, um, can be common uh, for different transgender folks. Uh, wherever, if if someone is sharing their pronouns with you, if someone is sharing uh, their name with you in in one way or another, they're either trying to be cordial with you or or build some sort of relationship with you. So being able to uh, to honor that. And just uh, very quickly, as you're meeting someone like, oh, uh, hi, my name is uh, Hector. Uh, you know, nice to meet you, Audrina. Oh, Audrina, what are your pronouns? Uh, you know, being able to get into the habit of, of, and of asking the question uh, right off the bat is, is a practice that we, um, um, we, we emphasize as well. And if, if, if it so happens that you uh, do dead name someone or you do misgender someone, uh, the common practice is to, is, to move, is to move forward with the correct name and the correct pronoun. And uh, f f trans people also share that they appreciate being thanked. Uh, so, oh, oh, I'm sorry, I used the wrong pronoun. Thank you for correcting me. You know, because it is, it, it is laborsome on the TGI person to consistently have to correct people around their names and their pronouns. Uh, so the fact that they are thanked and like, you know, thank you for your labor in that way uh, is, is appreciated because it can be, it can be very daunting. Uh, um, mm -hmm. You mind if I share uh, something really quickly? Hector? Go ahead, Fatima, yeah. So in an effort so that everyone doesn't believe that I am like just pretty goody two shoes, I got into some trouble last week. Um, and it was about misgendering and um, transphobia and all of those things. So a friend of mine went into a supermarket to purchase some things on her way to my house early that morning. And um, they accused her of trying to shoplift. And six big ass men tried to beat up on this girl with a stick in a publicly traded on the stock market supermarket. And they ran her out of the store. And then I was called in. First of all, she's my friend. And people that called me in were actually former clients of mine. So when I go down there to try to take care of this business, they are hostile to the fact that I am even there. Right. And that how dare you defend this fag? But I'm trans, too. So if I'm trans and you're trans and half the planet is trans, when the fight go down, guess who's going to be on the front line? So I got in trouble for some of the things that I did and the way that I approached that. But I don't really give a damn about getting in trouble. Bottom line was they should not have misgendered her. They should not have been repeatedly misgendering her and thinking that it was a thing to do in a public location. It was wrong. And then they tried to attack this girl. Six people tried to attack her with a damn stick like they shooing out a stray cat or a stray dog or something. Man, we people. Every day, every day, seven days a week, 99,000 million days a year. We are people. We are not animals. And, and that kind of treatment, I'm not down with that. I'm not going for that. And um, I'm going to roll in wherever that stuff rolls out. Thank you, Fatima. I know that there you have a lot of stories and experiences of where uh, you defend other folks and stand up for other folks and uh, our TGI community and just being out in the world 
and these situations arising out of just being able to exist, just simply being able to go to the supermarket and uh, trying to do everyday things. Uh, so uh, just uh, for audience know that some folks will do it on purpose, for some folks it will be deliberate. Uh, and so we want to be able to shift that bystander behavior as well of if you're seeing uh, trans folks being attacked uh, in any way, uh, being able to uh, step in and that's part of uh, being an accomplice as well. A, a separate training altogether. Uh, we hope that today's uh, practices and stories helped you understand a little bit more about yourself and who we are as TGI people. And uh, we will continue to be doing this work. Our next efforts are institutional uh, within your academic spaces. Uh, so we look forward to what you create within academia uh, for, for your students and beyond. Gracias, everyone. Oh, thank you so much, Hector and Fatima. Thank you all so much. Always enjoy uh, interacting with you. Always enjoy the gems that you give. And we are well, running out of time quickly, but I just wrote down a whole lot of things here, especially from Fatima, who is uh, the queen of stories and the queen of quotes. Um, and that is the trans history erased and denied. Uh, that's very real, but yet the language, we're in a period where you reminded us that the language and the realities are evolving. And then we have warriors uh, like Fatima who are going to, to, to fight for the recognition and fiercely so. Um, I wanna draw our participants uh, to a couple of things that we heard a few different ways today. We heard from Imani Barberin who talked about that inner voice and not letting that inner voice decimate you with its unhelpfulness uh, to find your family, to find your tribe, to choose those people to lift you up, who make you, who help contribute to making you whole. I think Loretta Ross and Lone Tran uh, talked to us about uh, hurt people hurting other people. And so we have to be mindful about the people that we have around us. And that's never truer than for a population of people who are, uh, have been so isolated and marginalized for so many years, but yet have uh, kicked open that door and are walking in the light. And we are here to be all supportive of that journey with you. I'm gonna ask everybody, um, you know, let's give up big ups uh, to Hector and Fatima.